everybody, Techie 101 here, here to announce the long-awaited results of my Espada popularity poll that I started about maybe three weeks ago. So, uh, I was surprised. Uh, you guys voted. This is the most uh, votes I've ever gotten for a popularity poll. I think the Captain one was only about maybe 50 or 60 votes. The Zonpok Toe one, I believe, was close to 200. This one was 750. So, I know I haven't done one of these in a long time. The last one I did one of these was, like, when I only had, like, less than 2K subscribers. Definitely less than 3K. So, um, yeah, just huge difference there, right there. I think I made it a little bit more simpler, this one, because the Zonpok Toe one, I think, was, a, a, like, much more widespread. You could select. This one was just limited to the Espada, although some of them were not Espada. Actually, some of them were not really even Bleach characters. So, before we get into the top uh, Espada, let's go into some of the votes that I just really want to wonder if you guys were just kind of fucking with me, okay? So, first off, let's just go into the Bleach characters that are not a spotter that still got votes. First one, the most popular one was Wanderweiss, Majera, who received six votes. Now, I'm not really going to get too mad at this because, I mean, it's been stated numerous times that Wanderweiss was not an Espada. Uh, there was the only, the only time that even came close to it was when the second invasion happened in the uh, World of the Living, when uh, that was the one where Ichigo just, like, accessed his hollow mask and he could only maintain it for 11 seconds and he fought Grimjow and his mask broke and Grimjow beat the shit out of him. That's, that's that fight. So, Wanderweiss showed up in that fight and when he was showing up, the Soul Society, when they noticed the Espada were popping up, they registered them all as Espada and Wanderweiss Wanderweiss was part of that group, so maybe he has the same power level as an Espada, but he was a Modaron car designed for, you know, that one used to take out or to take out uh, Yamamoto, so he might be at a Espada level for that reason, but he was not an Espada, but I'm not going to get too mad that we got six votes for him, because he was kind of an interesting character, but these other ones... Uh, are, are completely just, you know, like, this isn't even, like, uh, like, arguable why people voted for this. Other just to screw with me. One vote went to Charlotte Kuhorn, a fraction of a spot of number two, Bargain Louise. And, uh, thank you for making me remember him, because after that fight with you, Machika, I just boop, blotted him out of my memory, because, my God, that fight was just, like, look at that! Why did you need to show off his groin area like that? Why the fuck do you think that was a good idea, Kubo? <sighs> And the other one was uh, Tozen. Yeah, Tozen, former captain of the 9th Division. He received one vote. Um, is that because he had hollow powers? If that's the case, why didn't you just vote for a visor? Why the fuck did you vote for Tozen? I mean, yeah, he had a resurrection. You know, whatever, I don't even care. That's, that's fine. That's, that's, that's fine. Because the other votes I got for other characters that were not Bleach-related are even more hilarious. Get this, okay. <clears throat> One vote went to Madara Uchiha, and one vote went to Neji Hyuga. Funny, huh? Yeah, okay, okay. The only thing I have to say to that is whoever voted for those characters might be thinking, oh, I'm going to troll him. I'm going to vote for a character that's not even a Bleach related. Okay, no, because uh, I, I, I will give 100 troll points to the asshole out there that voted for this character. Bella from fucking Twilight! <laughs> you know, I think we personally should set our time away to congratulate this person for uh, receiving the Troll of the Year Award. You know, it's a very, very prestiged honor that's only handed out to only the most trolling people of the internet. So, we congratulate you for voting for Bella from Twilight. The prize is that I don't go to your house and pound your head in with a fucking truncheon. That, that is the, the prize of winning the, uh, the, the, the Troll of the Year Award. So, uh, those were the votes that I just wanted to bring up because they were honestly hilarious. So that was that. Let's get into the actual votes of the contest now, okay? All right, let's let's do this. Apologies if the quality just kind of dipped my primary camera died. Okay, so first off, let's talk about Loopy. Okay, Loopy was, I forgot to mention him in the first, uh, in, in the video that you could vote for Loopy. I mentioned you could vote for Nelio, but I forgot about Loopy. Honestly, I didn't care about Loopy. Even if I mentioned him, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't have gotten a lot of votes. And I was right. The guy only received two votes the entire time. So I didn't really count him as part of the Espada, because at least Nelio had a bit of a backstory. We got a little bit of knowing, like, what she was like while she is an Espada. And she she got kicked out of the Espada, uh, very similar in a way that Loopy got kicked out. She got basically defeated and thrown out of Lost Noches and was replaced, kind of the same way that Loopy was, where Loopy was, uh, you know, blown up by Grimjow and then he reclaimed his space. But the only difference between them is that Loopy only showed up for like three or four chapters, if that. Like, he was not a very popular character, I can imagine, so he only received two votes. So I'm not really going to count him in the entire Espada run. So, 
In the 11 Espada, from uh, Stark to uh, Yami, including Nelio, we have number 11, Yami. He only received six votes. I was a little shocked by this. You know, when you, when you ask yourself who is the least popular Espada, you're probably going to say Aaron Yero or Zolmari or, uh, you know, you're not, you're really, I didn't really think Yami. You know, I, I thought it was going to be one of the other two because Yami, I mean, he's gotten way more screen time than the other two did. Uh, Aaron Yero and Zomri were pretty much just limited to their respective battle and that was it. Yami was, like, one of the very first Espada to actually be seen in the entire series arriving with Ukiora. We got to see him uh, fight against, uh, you know, Ichigo for a little bit there. Granted, he, um, we showed up again when he was uh, fighting against Uohara in the uh, the second invasion. And then he kind of disappeared for a while, but then he came back and we got to see his Zonpakuto release, which, I mean, I was always, you know, I'm always upset that, that Yami's uh, full release form battle with Byaki and Kenpachi was always cut short. It was never, well, we did, wasn't even cut short, we didn't even get to see the damn thing. I was always annoyed by that, but I didn't think he would actually be considered the, the, um, the least popular Espada, but yeah. He only received six votes. I feel pretty bad for the guy. I mean, he didn't even really get that much of a, you know, like of a fan base, really. I mean, sorry, dude. I mean, I didn't really like him that much, but <sighs> whatever, Yami. Maybe if we saw your final battle with Kenpachi and uh, Byakuya, maybe we'd have voted you a little bit more if you did something awesome. But no, you just get pissed off and you get bigger. So what? Number 10 with 9 votes is Zomarito Lewis. So, I knew he was... I'm not just happy he's not on the bottom, because he is by far not my... He's not my favorite, but I, if I was going to rank him, I'd say he's probably in the top 5. I always thought his Zompok Toe ability was always pretty cool. Uh, I really wish he would have gotten a little bit... Like, his personality was not really that interesting. It was more just like, I obey Aizen, I'm very dutiful, I'm just gonna obey him and do whatever he asks of me, so, you know, that was kind of, you know, bland there, but his Zonpok Toe power was probably the weirdest. I mean, just releasing the damn thing. It was called Bruherita, and in order to release it, he had to, like, levitate it, like a magician's act, and then the sword began to bend, and then his head twisted at a 180 degree angle, and then, uh, or like a 90 degree angle, it twisted until it was flat, like straight. And then his, like, like this oozing substance came out of his bent sword, enveloped him, and then turned him into his release form. That's like the weirdest release form, period. I mean, just that alone gave him, like, props with me, just that he had that power. Uh, his ability to control multiple things is really only rivaled by Byakuya, whose Byakuya ability basically summoned multiple things, like, uh, like millions that you couldn't control. He can only control 50 things, but you gotta figure, if he fought against pretty much any other captain, his abilities would have been far, far more threatening. If he fought against Byakuya, or Mayuri, or Ichigo, uh, or anybody like that, like, his abilities would actually be kind of useful, but Byakuya is just like, well, you can control 50 things. Well, I have 100 million and 50, so, you. So, you know, that's how that fight basically went, but, um, you know, I, I think if he just got more screen time or something, you know, he would have been way more popular, but, sorry, Zomari, you'll be always cool to me, bro. Number 9 is Araniero Araru Eri with 16 votes. Way more than I thought this guy would get. Well, thing, g girl, whatever. Um, you know, I, I mean, the fight against Rukia was kind of like a mindfuck moment when we turned out that, you know, it's Kayan, but it's not really Kayan. I found it really, I was really clever that Kubo found a way to incorporate Kayan back into the plot without having, like, a flashback or without having, like, um, some really, like, like a horned-in excuse of what Kayan's power was. We actually got a very, leg like, legitimate ability from Araguero, who's able to absorb other hollows and uh, gather their powers, and of course Metastasia would have been one of these hollows, and Kain was brought back with Metastasia, so it all makes sense. Um, you know, I always wondered that Arunero stated he was the uh, only Gilead among the Espada, and he was the only Espada that was, like, like lingered around from the uh, first generation. Now, after we find out that Yami is actually the zero Espada, then we find out that Arunero was actually the weakest, uh, which makes the fact that Rukia defeated him a little bit more plausible, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so I always wondered, like, okay, well, if he's the only Espada that is a Gillion, and he can eat other Espada and exponentially increase his power, and he's done this, like, 10,000 times, why doesn't he just, like, why doesn't Aizen feed him an Ahujas? Like, if, if Aizen went out, grabbed an Ahujas, threw it, like, or even a Vasto Lorde, it would be shit for Aizen. He could do that easy. It's like, here, eat this. You'll be, you know, it's like freaking steroids for you. You get strong, man. So, I don't know why they never did anything like that. I mean, obviously it's been stated, like, he's only been eating, like, regular hollows when he could be eating other Gileons, Ahujas, Vastelorde. He'd be, he'd be freaking beast. Like, like, literally. 
so yeah. Um, also, really cool that they showed him back again when the... Uh, also, what the hell was up with it when um, they did the Hellverse prequel? Remember that? They did uh, like, the little prequel where they show uh, Sea Isle and uh, Araniero arrive in Hell and they fight against uh, the uh, the uh, Tenjubito, the, uh, the, the, uh, the Fallen Ones, the Sinners. What was the deal with Araniero's... Zompato release being yellow in that. I was like, I never wa I always wondered about that, because in the original it was purple, this was yellow. I'm like, was it really that hard to go back and look and see, hey, that's purple. No, it's yellow. Purple, yellow. I mean, you could say it's hell different. I don't know. So next up is Noitora Jeruga with 27 votes. And it's interesting because the spot that comes immediately after Noitora at the number 7 spot beat him by one vote. So Noitora got 27, the next person got 28. So this was the closest one in the poll. I really like that though when we got like we get ones this close. So Noitora, you know, he um, always just puzzled me by his what his exact purpose was or his goal was. Kind of the same thing with Grim Zhao. And that was, he always acted like he was the best. He was the king. He, well, no, Grim Zhao acted like he was the, he always said he was the king. Uh, Noitora just said he's the strongest. And, you know, no one shall talk down upon me. No one shall say I'm weaker. Hell not, like, even a woman. So that's why his whole thing with Nelia was so strained. But the thing I always wondered, like, okay, why the hell do you go around saying I'm the strongest, I'm the best? when you have a number five tattooed on your tongue, dude. It's like, it's obvious that, like, don't be picking a fight with Kenpachi. Don't be picking a fight with, with Grimshaw or Ichigo. Pick a fight with Ukiora. Pick a fight with Holly Bell if you want to be the strong. Hell, pick a fight with Aizen. No? You don't want to pick a fight with, oh, why not, baby? Huh? Why, you don't want to fight the gong guy that's going to kill you? Okay, well, you know, then you're not the strongest then. Go around and keep, don't go around and brag to yourself that you're the best because you just kind of sound like a little child that, you know, is like five years old and gets beaten up by the bigger kids, and he's just like, I'm so much better, I'm stronger than them, I can kick their asses, you know, he's like, he's like, dude, it's not gonna work, okay, you're, you're not, you're not fooling anybody here, uh, despite the fact he was one of the very few, uh, characters in the entire series that actually brought Kenpachi Zoraki to the brink of death, to the point where Zoraki's actually like, he's like getting hacked and slashed from like six different directions by Noitora, and he's smiling, and then after like, Noitora basically takes a break in the fight, really to just catch his breath from attacking Kenpachi so much. He's just standing there, Kenpachi, and he's bleeding everywhere, and he just kind of, like, grabs his neck, and his neck is, like, a huge laceration. He's bleeding out, like, profusely, and he's just like, damn, I could actually die here. <laughs> and he's like, okay, time to break out some kendo, bitch. And, you know, that, yeah, that's how he wins. But, uh, you know, it was further explained later on with, uh, you know, Yachiru or Unahana stated, like, oh, that's... You know why you barely won against Noitora Jiruga is because your true power wasn't unlocked. So, you know, if nothing else, Noitora kind of helped just a little bit to give us the Kenpachi that we all know and love. So, Noitora, thanks for that, man. So, number seven is Sile Aporo Grants with 28 votes. Beat Noitora by one vote. So, yeah. Uh, which is uh, kind of fitting because Noitora and Sile kind of had that... Um, kind of had that rival, not rivalry, kind of had that partnership with uh, Nellie and everything. So, Sile was actually interesting. From what we've seen from that flashback, Sile was actually a member of the Espada, and then got kicked out one time, and then actually came back to the Espada after, I guess, Nellio was banished from Wild Quico Mundo. She, he became another uh, Espada again. So very interesting there. Don't really know what number he was before the whole thing with uh, Nellio because uh, back then, Noitoro was number eight. So I don't know how exactly that works. But uh, in any case, Sile is the resident mad scientist of the group. There always has to be one, you know? Like like in the bounce, it was Ugaki. Uh, in the Espada, it's Sile. In the captains, it's Mayori. There always has to be one crazy scientist dude. Like some guy that uses intelligence instead of just uh, like um, just flat out fighting, and a lot of his battle strategies involve that. Like all of his battle strategies or resurrection doesn't really involve any kind of frontal attack. It's always like some other method. Like when he's not released, he usually tends to have his other spot of fight for him. When he's uh, in his released form, he uses the carbon copy technique, or he uses the dolls, or he uses his uh, his uh, Gabriele technique. It's nothing really anything that attacks you directly. Usually through poisons or some kind of toxins. Um, his theme as an espada is also kind of ooky because it's all like sexual perversion themes because his aspect of death is lust so his 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 whole thing is just basically just like is like yes my zompak toe is uh, oh what was it called they actually changed it i think in the english version is la Juriosa, which was basically the um the lustful but in the original it was something a lot more disgusting it was uh fornary caras that was it it was uh to fornicate that 
that was the literal interpretation. And he 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 does it by licking his zonfok toe and eating it. Sip for And it was, oh, dude, just stay away from the small children, please. Then again, I'm pretty sure the small children would already know to avoid the guy that has pink hair. So uh, yeah, Sile, pretty pretty screwed up, man, the jamma. But all in all, pretty cool spot. It was alright. Mayori kicked his ass. I loved him. <laughs> Mayori. Just like every single time Sile like thought he had the upper hand. He's just like, he's like, oh, you're gonna eat, you're gonna use your uh, Bonkai to eat me? Well, I'll just control your Bonkai. Oh, okay, I'll just blow it up. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Well, I'll take your lieutenant hostage. I don't care. I'm like, oh, well, I'm gonna kill your lieutenant, and then I'm gonna reborn myself through her body. Okay, you know you just absorbed like five different kinds of poisons there. Um, not the least of which is the one that's going to think you're around for a hundred years when really it's only a second, so enjoy the worst agonizing death possible for any kind of living creature. I'm the captain of Squad 12, by the way. <laughs> so yeah, way to go, Mayuri. Alright, so number six is Bargain Louise and Barm with 40 votes. Uh, most of the comments involved him basically stating like, Well, no, he was the king of Wakamundo, and he actually technically was the strongest of Spada when you consider the fact that he can literally kill you just by breathing you. Um, and the way that the fight ended with Bargain was never really... It was something that I, I could kind of figure that that's how exactly he would go out, which when he was kept, when he kept out boasting, like, oh, my power is absolute, nothing can defend against it. I'm thinking, okay, is this going to be like a double-edged sword thing where they're going to finish him off with his own powers? And at first I thought that, but then I started thinking, like, well, maybe not, because he's clearly walking through his respira. He's clearly emitting it, so obviously he wouldn't be, you know, to, like, to kill by it, because he's obviously immune to it, right? So, and then Bar and then Hachi does this whole little trick with his, like, uh, I, I think it was called Farewell Box, like, technique, where he sends his hand back into his body, and it eats him out from my inside out. Here's my question, though. So, Bargain's Respira, it's the breath of death. Anything it touches becomes completely eradicated, except for his outside of his body, which is apparently protected through some other power. Okay, so where does the Respira come from? Does the Respira start inside of his body? And then he breathes it, because if that, that that like that raises a whole bunch of other questions. Like if it starts from inside his body, then it should begin to eat him out while he's breathing it. Unless it doesn't start inside of his body, unless it, like he starts it from outside. But I mean, I guess that would make sense. But really, I just I don't get that. Unless you could say something like, oh, there's a special special part of his body which is untouched. Like not not really, because every part of his body was eradicated upon access of his abilities with. Uh, with uh, Nihachi's farewell box, so whatever. Also, we gotta look at, uh, it was because of him we gotta look at Soifan's Bankai, which I remind you, is a fucking missile! So, yeah, dude. Just, yeah, man. Sorry, Bargain, you, you, got, you got nuked, like, hardcore. So, yeah, Bargain got nuked, hardcore, but went out like a champion. Took out, like, one last stab at Aizen before he went. It was all for nothing, but hey, he tried. Moving on to number five with 70 votes, we have Nellie L2 Alda Schwak. So uh, she is the former third spotter who was banished from Wakamundo due to uh, Noitora and Sile's uh, trickery. So uh, she was a child for most of her life uh, as she traveled with her, uh, uh, I guess she considered them her brothers, uh, uh, Peche and uh, Dona Chaka, before returning to Wakamundo with Ichigo and regaining her true powers. And she also showed up in the last arc after like so much time of like, what the hell happened to Nell? Did they just like, leave her out there in the sand? Like what happened? So, uh, you know, she's back again and I hope that we get to see a little bit of her, of her full power form while she's fighting against some Stern Ritters because we need to see that again like we do. Um, we just, yeah. So uh, her character was like, I, I, I have to say when I was first reading Bleach I did not expect the whole, you know, she's going to turn out to be, you know, former Espada, you know, you know, like a full, like she's going to be like a sealed adult or whatever. I, I was, I was, a, I was figuring there was something going to go on with her because of her, like, she, like, like she exhibited the power to like, she could absorb a Sarah and she could run really fast. I'm just like, okay. Whereas there's something going on with her, like why, why are they making such a big deal about her? So um, I didn't think that was like the last thing I expected though. I expected like she was going to be like, actually she was going to turn out to be like, um, like eyes and secret weapon or something, kind of like Wonderwise did turned out to be. But uh, you know that, that didn't turn out the way it wanted. But it was pretty cool. Also, I really hope when she shows back up, she's still in the in the torn uh, cape thing, so we get to see. Oh, what I'm a pervert. Whatever. I don't care. She's hot. Okay, as an adult, that's the tricky thing, you know. That's a tricky thing when you want to like a character like that. You know, how are you gonna how are you gonna do that when she's a, in child form? It's like, oh no, when she's in child form, I don't have. It's only when she's in adult form. Yeah, and don't even call me a perv because you know what the title of the episode was 
where uh, Nell becomes like 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 she turns back into her adult form. You know what that episode was called in Japan? I believe it was called Nellie L's Transformation. A big breasted beauty joins the battle. So they they even knew what their target demographic was for that episode. Like, they even knew like who was going to watch that episode immediately. It's like oh, oh here's the episode. Okay awesome cool. But uh, Nellie L seventy votes made the top five. So she deserves it most definitely. So moving along to number four, we have the other female spot with seventy four votes. Holly Bell, or Tia Holly Bell. So, Holly Bell is, um, she, she's one of the spies that strikes me as she doesn't really follow Aizen because she really believes him in or anything like that. Because we saw right at the end when Aizen was, you know, killing her, she had no reserve, like, reservations on stabbing the dude. He, she, she knew what she was getting into. But here's the thing, her aspect of death is sacrifice. So, in the anime, we have a little bit of her backstory. We didn't get this in the manga, but basically, Aizen shows up and says, I can use my power to protect all of your friends. You just have to join me and become one of my espadas. So, Holly Bell goes with him. And I always imagine, like, she's only there because of her subordinates. She's sacrificing her, her basically, her entire freedom to do whatever she wants as an espa, as, as a hollow, to become one of Aizen's army. She might not have the same ideals. She might not want to hurt humans. She might not want to do the things that Aizen is telling her to do. But as Gein stated, they just spa to follow Aizen because he is strong. He, she knows that as long as she is under, like, her subordinates are with, under Aizen's control, under Aizen's army, then they're going to be safe. So that's why she sacrificed herself. But she still has her own personality. She still has her own motives and her own uh, thought processes. So whenever she gets cut down by eyes and she's just like, oh, you lie, you traitor scumbag. And she's like, tries to kill him, but he goes as well as uh, possible. She was thought of to be dead for a very long time, in fact. It wasn't until like the data book Unmasked, where, uh, or was it Masked? One of the two, the third one, where uh, Kubo stated, yeah, Holly Bell's still alive. And we have like a little bit of in-between chapters when she goes back to Hueco Mundo with Apache Sunset and Mila Rose and kind of takes over Wake of and it was finally confirmed in the Stern Ritter arc in the uh, the uh, Thousand Year Blood Holy War arc where Peche states yeah the, yeah Holly Bell was basically in charge around here and, uh, until the uh, Quincy showed up anyway and blew the entire desert up so yeah so uh, you know good for Holly Bell you know I'm, I'm hoping she's still alive because she was basically in Yuha Box demented sex dungeon or whatever whatever the hell they wanted to, they did to her I really God I really don't want to know I I really oh, why was she like still in her released form. Her revealing, you know, barely covering any skin of her release form. That, that, uh, <laughs> along with an organization that has a majority of a bunch of guys, and that's, that's not a really, uh, a good thought there, but... Holly Bell, I hope you're still okay, because you're awesome. <laughs> please, please, like, go back, do your, like, I, I hope you have a Segunde Tapa. Do a Segunde Tapa, turn into a shark and bite you all's head off. Can you do that for me by the end of the series? That... That'd be pretty cool. Or even if Yuha is already dead by like Ichigo's hands, you could like turn into a shark and just eat him anyway. That 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 would be pretty sweet. All right, so we have the top three Espada, and I bet you're all sitting there wondering what could they possibly be. These are the okay, yeah, you could probably figure. Okay, so the whole reason I didn't want to start the poll in the first place is because I knew immediately who was going to win this. I knew who was going to be the top echelon of the Espada. It would be Ukiora and Grimjow, but. Somebody else that kind of came out of left field was Stark. And I was wondering, okay, I mean, I like Stark. He's my favorite Espada, but I wonder how many other people liked him. I didn't really think of other people really liked him as much. Well, uh, let's go into the top echelon, shall we, and see how many people like these uh, certain characters. So, number three, with 105 votes, we have Grim Zhao Jagger Jack. Uh, no surprise there, really. I, I mean, he's always been a little bit less popular than Ukiora. Ukiora kind of attracts the... Uh, it's like, oh, he's so sad and brooding. and brooding. So he kind of attracts the fan fiction uh, crowd there because every single fan fiction I see him in is either pairing him up with Orihime or something along the lines of that. So uh, Grim Zhao's always been a little bit less popular than him, so I kind of figured that's how that was going to play out. So sorry, Grim Zhao. Looks like in the end of the day, you couldn't beat, uh, you couldn't beat Ukiora. He still had the upper tan, so still go 105 votes, though, dude. That's... That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, Red Alex Six, I believe, sent me in a video, a video response. I only got two video responses from Red Alex and uh, Hero Kid Forty Two, I believe, and I believe it was, um, uh, it was him that sent in a video uh, for uh, Grim Zhao in, uh, well, half of the video that he sent me. It was actually pretty good. Oh, oh by the way, I'll put the links to the, uh, both the, uh, I'm going to put the uh, voting page back up again so you can read through some of the comments, and I'm also going to put back up uh, links to the uh, video response. And I only got two, but I'll put the links to the video responses below. So, Grim Zhao, Jagger Jack, Six Dick Stada, uh, so, 
So Grim Jow Jaggerat, so Grim Jow Jajag, so Grim Jow Jaggerjack, Sex Dead Espada, Pentata release form. Only hope is, you know, you're going to still show back up in the series. So, uh, I mean, he's it's been stated numerous times that he's going to be back. It's obviously him. I mean, we know we haven't seen his face yet, but he's going to show back up again. And the word on the street is he's going to have a Segunda top ability, and he's going to kick some Stern Render A. So, looking forward to that. Looking forward to that. So, number two, we have... Ukiora Shifa with 100 and let me double check this 111 votes. So he beat Grim Zhao by six. Oh, that's rubbing it in, isn't it, Ukiora? That's really rubbing it in. Is like, hey, I'm gonna beat you in this poll and I'm gonna do it by six votes. <laughs> okay, so he he got second place and uh, Ukiora like okay. In terms of Espada, like, I never really thought of him as my, like, one of my top favorites because he's always, I'm not, I don't like characters that are, have his, like, like that brooding, very depressed kind of demeanor and he acts all serious all the time, just like, he's like, you cannot defeat me because you are too weak. I stand on a higher echelon above you. You don't have any hope of defeating me with your pathetic steel. Like, I hate characters like that. I don't like them when they act like that. It, it has, they, that, that, that's their personality. That's the reason I don't like them. That's their entire personality, is this very brooding, dark personality. And Itachi was like this to begin with in Naruto, but after a little bit, I kind of warmed up to Itachi because he had more of a personality at the end. He had like, oh, he really loves Sasuke. Oh, he did this for a reason. He didn't just do this because he was a cold, heartless bastard. You know, he, he cried when he had to do it. He didn't want to do it. And that kind of redeemed that character. Ukiora kind of got something of a resemblance to that at the end, where he found out, like, oh, I understand what a human heart is, oh, but I'm fading away. Now, you can't do that. You can't shove that in at the last chapter. The last chapter he was in, he started to act a little bit more human. He was just like, oh, I've kind of warmed up to you guys a little bit. Hey, maybe that's what the heart is. <laughs> you know? You can't shove that in at the very end, like the whole redeeming quality. You have to actually have it, like, like look with Itachi. Itachi started off as a cold, heartless bastard, and then the series progressed. He became a little bit more human until, uh, like, the final climax with Itachi, we had, uh, you know, him the big, like, reveal at the end, like, when uh, Obito revealed, like, the whole story behind him, and even more so when he was revived. You know, it was, a, it was a journey that excelled and eventually came to the pinnacle where Itachi was a good person and could be considered a hero rather than a, an antagonist. So... That's how you do character development, Kubo. Just throwing it out there. Okay, so number one. It's obviously Stark. Coyote Stark, because, well, I guess in conjunction it would also be Lily Net Gingerback. But, so, we have Coyote Stark here. Guess how many votes he got. So, if Ukiora... Grimjow got 105, and uh, Ukiora got uh, 111. Guess how many uh, Stark received. Oh my god, it's... I'll tell you one thing, probably close to like, what did I get, 750 votes? That had to be close to one in every four people voted for Stark. He received 251 votes. That is amazing. That is, I think, over, actually, um, one-fourth of the votes that he received. So... Uh, yeah, uh, Coyote Stark first Espada, who received probably one of the more pathetic deaths in the series. Not really pathetic, just like, bargain takes taken out by, you know, uh, you know, getting nuked by Soyphone in a magical barrier that's like insanely powerful, and Hachi sends his disembodied arm into his body and gets removed. Holly Bell gets taken out by the person she thought to be his ma her master. You know, Ukiora gets taken out by Hollow Super Jedi Uber Awesome Ichigo, and, uh, Stark gets taken out by getting cut by Shoot and Sweet. That, that, that's it. He, he gets cut by Shoot and Sweet. And then his hollow hole cracks and breaks and he falls and he dies. It's okay! I'm okay with it. I just have to process that. Okay, so Stark is my favorite of Spada and you know, I think he really got the shaft in terms of a battle. Just in, like, all that stuff I just said. Also the fact that he was, like, the only Espada that didn't have a captain, like, the only the top three Espada that didn't have a uh, captain use their Bonkai on. You know, he, he fought against what? He fought against Shun Sui, Rose, Love, and none of them even got a chance to use their Bonkai against them. That, that is pathetic. He had to use his, uh, he used his, uh, his Resurrection ability, but he didn't get a, he didn't get a Bonkai. That's not fair. Um, 
Oh, uh, the other uh, the other half of Red Alexa's ability. Red Alexa's uh, friend in that uh, video response video also voted for Stark. So there's there there was that, and I know, and I, it was real. I think a bunch of people fell fast to the guy. That's like 251 people that I think that, 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 that believe that Stark got the shaft majorly. Uh, because he did. He did. He he deserved more than that. He at least deserved a Bonkai. Okay. Kubo, you don't want to show off Shirin Sweet's Bonkai. I get that. Show loves. Show roses. You know, we're going to see... I mean, you could have showed loves because... There's a fly in here. I'm having flashbacks to a live stream I did last night. Anyway, so, um, I mean, it's, um, it's like, okay, you want to use Shun Sui's Bonkai a little bit later because he's going to turn out to be an AI captain. He's going to, like, he, like Ukitake stated, like, oh, you can't use your Bonkai because other people can see. I understand. Maybe it's some kind of weird effect that affects everybody in an area. You don't want to use it in a, in a group fight. Okay, I got that. I understand. Maybe you don't want to show Rose's Bonkai because he's going to turn out to be a captain eventually and you had this planned out by then and you wanted to make sure to show his Bonkai against a, a Sturmator. Show loves. Love's not going to go back to be a captain. Love's going to stay in the world of the living. We might never get a chance to see his Bonkai again. And, and even regarding the other captains, I mean, we saw Kensei's Bonkai in that same exact fight, in the fight against the, uh, the, uh, the Hollows and the, and the Espada. We got to see Kensei's fight against uh, Wanderweiss very briefly. And by briefly, I mean that he just went Bonkai, Wanderweiss attacked him, we got a big explosion, and then we cut to Wanderweiss in his released form, we cut to Kensei after the battle, heavily bandaged, just like, what the hell happened? You know, <laughs> really. So, uh, you could have showed at least loves, did something anyway. I don't know. You know what I just thought would make more sense? Follow me on this. Wanderweiss's ability was Extinguer, which was to eliminate Yamamoto's Bonkai, I mean, eliminate uh, Yamamoto's uh, Shikai, which was fire-related. Wouldn't it have made more sense for Kensei and Rose to fight against uh, Stark? Because that way, Kensei could have showed off his Bonkai, and maybe we could have got a little bit on more in-depth of what his Bonkai could do. And then meanwhile, Love could have been the person that fought against... Wanderweiss, and then Love could have went in his Shushu with Shikai, which is fire-related, and then Wanderweiss could have used the ability on Love, so that was extinguished his Zanpakuto, so it would have made more sense for Wanderweiss just to show up behind Yamamoto. Like, everything stays the same, except for Wanderweiss, uh, I mean, except for uh, Love and Kensei switching places in terms of fighting. We get a little bit more in-depth of Wanderweiss's uh, Zanpakuto for Love, and then we get a little bit more in-depth of Kensei's Bonkai for Stark. Just saying, that would have made a lot more sense, actually. Damn it, Kubo. Come up with ideas here. Okay. Well, anyway, anyway, that was the end of the Espada Pool, guys. 750 votes. You guys are freaking awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, this was a really long one, so I'm going to probably put it on the vlog channel. But, um, I mean, this was a really long video, so I'm going to put it on the vlog channel. But regardless of that, Stark, you deserve it, bro. You deserve it. Rest in peace, Coyote Stark. Rest in peace. Lean on me when you're not strong, and I'll be your friend. I don't know this song. I really should, because it's a really famous song. Oh, Stark, you came and you left me without taking, but you got cut down by Shun Sui. Oh, Stark.